they are making a difference on 938 Live. Now, while most 21-year-olds are still looking for the best cure for a hangover, there's one 21-year-old here in Singapore who has an impressive CV for setting up initiatives for those less fortunate. Deborah Lam founded the Deaf Dragon Singapore back in 2012 and is now embarking on Society Staples. She tells us more. Society Staples um, is a startup social enterprise. Um, that believes in promoting acceptance, equality and ultimately striving to make Singapore a more inclusive society. So uh, what we do is we raise awareness of um, persons with disabilities and also other marginalised groups. So currently we are doing um, Dragon Boat orientation um, programs for corporates and large groups who you know, are looking at um, team building activities. And we are also um, embarking on a mission to create Singapore's first inclusive gym. First inclusive gym. This interests me. What does that mean? Okay, so an inclusive gym basically means a community gym where anyone and everyone can come in to work out. So it's going to be wheelchair accessible. It's going to be visually uh, handicap friendly. We are also going to have information in visual and both audio so that it can cater to both the deaf and the blind. Because our current gyms, they do not have accessibility for persons with disabilities. And exactly why did you decide to set something like this up? It sounds very challenging. (laughs) Okay, so um, it really started about Three years back, when my co-founder, Ryan, uh, he actually saw this storm article of a special uh, needs school teacher that was, in a way, writing some degradatory remarks on her Facebook about the students that she was taking care of. Mm -hmm. So that really infuriated him, and that's how he started concepting the idea of Deaf Dragon. So Deaf Dragon is a team for the hearing impact, and Mm -hmm. to date, we are the first team to actually feel a full Deaf team in Dragon Boat history. And yeah, so the idea of this inclusive gym really spun off from Death Dragons because through Death Dragons, we saw how sports was actually a very um, strong platform to bring people together Mm -hmm. and also to allow the community to see um, persons with disabilities for their abilities. And we wanted to expand this platform, you know, to make it um, accessible for other disabilities as well. Is there a demand for this though? Have you gotten feedback from the disabled community that something like this is lacking for them? Um, definitely. So we have done quite a lot of um, research and also we've talked to a number of key stakeholders. One very shocking fact was when I was interviewing one of my visually handicapped friends, she actually told me that the current gym, she actually gets denied from going in after the staff knows that she's blind. And we have also been reading a lot more reports about government initiatives on how they're trying to make sports more inclusive. And um, CNA also did an interview talking about overcoming sports for the disabled. And, you know, they also con- um, further explored the options that there's currently no community initiatives where persons with disabilities can just walk in and do sports together with the community. So this is where we're coming in to bridge this gap. In setting up this gym, I can imagine actually sourcing for the right equipment that will accommodate uh, so many disabilities all in one space. That must be quite a challenge. Can you take us through the difficulties that you're facing right now? Okay, so um, initially we really wanted a gym with all the inclusive equipment that you mentioned. So, you know, things like um, being wheelchair friendly and all. Um, But then we realised that having that kind of equipment poses a little bit of limitations and restrictions on ourselves because um, it's very costly. And also for, um, for, let's say, a community member who is coming in, that type of equipment is definitely not suitable for the community members. So we changed our concept a little. So right now, um, we are really focused on setting up a strength and conditioning gym. So when I talk about strength and conditioning, think about equipment like your free weight. So Mm. things that are very um, highly adaptable and mobile, and yet the intensity and the load can be scaled to any kind of fitness level. So instead of machines that you see at your commercial gym, we are going to be all free weight and free equipment um, things so that it's really accommodating for everyone. Deborah, you're a very young lady. Where are you getting all this drive and passion and fire from? Uh, Well, um, I would guess a lot of motivation actually comes from my co-founder, Ryan. I think he has taught me to be a better person and also to make me... I would say he's actually the one who made me um, so passionate about, you know, all these social causes. So right 
from ever since I was young, I always knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I never ever thought about um, doing things like, you know, business for a good cause. I always believe in, you know, if my business makes a lot of profit, then I'll just probably like donate a certain percentage or an amount to a particular organization or charity. But um, when Ryan woke me in for Death Dragons and he slowly, you know, brought me along the journey and opened my eyes to all these social problems, I started to realize that my passion for it started growing. And now I really believe um, in his vision that, you know, no matter how small you are or how little resources you have, um, if you're willing to put in the effort and do the part, uh, I believe we can actually um, try to make Singapore a more inclusive society. And that was Deborah Lum, one of the founders of Society Staples. You can get in contact with them and find out more about what they do at facebook.com slash society staples. This has been They Are Making a Difference. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Daphne Lim. They are making a difference on 938 Live.